Today we're taking on a wild challenge, packing for a 10-day trip to the beautiful and bustling Japan, using just one backpack. You heard that right, just one. With Japan's rich culture, unpredictable weather, and the sheer number of activities you can do, is it even possible to pack minimalistically and still be prepared? Ah! Or did we just make a massive mistake? <laughs> yep, that was me getting hit in the head by cat with a bamboo sword. But that's a different story for a future video on this Japan series. Okay. So whoever has this mic talks, okay? We have to pack for 10 days in two carry-ons, which we have never done before, but we are up for challenge. We have to start with Antonio's luggage because he is carrying all the gear. We will pack everything around that and whatever is left, we will try to pack in mine. We think all of this can fit into these backpacks. 10 days in Japan. So the plan is to have one pair of pants, one pair of shorts, one pair of sneakers, a t-shirt, per day, one pair of underwear per day, a pair of socks per day, and toiletries. I'm going to take your toiletries because it's heavier and we are trying to offset the weight. We are also going to pack masks because we learned that it's quite common to wear masks inside in Japan, even after all the restrictions were lifted. Plus, we know it's going to be raining quite a lot, so we have two raincoats, very simple rain ponchos. Got some rain, but we're all good because we got rain ponchos. Ponchos, 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 ponchos. So for me, I'm bringing one backpack and it's the nomadic photo traveling backpack. I saw that a lot of people were complaining that it's a little too big. The purpose of that for me is that I can fit all my gear, which is one main camera, the Sony FX3 that I'm sh shooting with right now, an Insta360 video camera, my computer for editing and watching Formula One, and my little Insta360 Go this one right here. I'm also bringing batteries, charger, a computer charger, a power bank that I actually you are the one who is taking the power bank, plus all my clothing. Everything that I mentioned fits actually pretty perfectly into the backpack. Even if we don't find a place where we can do laundry, which we should find one place uh, to do laundry one day, I should be able to wear one clean pair of underwear every day and one pair of socks that is clean every day. If not, I'm okay with re-wearing it for one or two days, but I think we should be okay. Actually, finding a laundromat went from being a luxury to a must. Coming from Arizona, we're used to high temperatures. The one thing that we forgot is about the humidity. Yep, Japan is very humid in the summer. So I was sweating a lot. I'm sweating. Try not to die because it's really hot. And I'm sweating again a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> I know. So we didn't count with the fact that instead of wearing one t-shirt per day, it turned out that we had to wear two t-shirts per day because of the humidity. So make sure you don't make the same mistake. We're counting for one set of clothing that is clean per day. I'm only bringing one pair of sneakers that I'm wearing, so I'm not gonna be putting them in my backpack. Same with a pair of jeans and same with a sweater that we're bringing just in case. If you're traveling an airplane, do yourself a favor and bring a sweater. Also bringing my traveling documents, my passport, Suica card is a must have if you go to Japan apparently. Another thing that one reason that why we decided to go with backpacks as opposed to normal carry-ons is that based on a bunch of videos that we watched before booking our trip to Japan is that there's a lot of stairs in Japan and Tokyo and Kyoto and all the cities that we're gonna be at. So we do wanna be able to be more mobile and agile. <laughs> Plus, we won't stay at one hotel for longer than two nights. We will be moving around a lot. We're going to be using public transportation. That's what Suica cards are for. We will be traveling from city to city via Shinkansen and we want to be very quick on our feet. I have a little bigger luggage because that's the one which is going to stay in the hotel if we are out and about. Besides that, I will have my little crossbody purse, which is my new addition to my collection. I don't collect purses, so I will be able to fit all my personal things. So I'm going to pack everything Antonio is not able to fit to his backpack. And then on the top of it, I have all the basics. I am bringing my flip-flops. I will have one top for each day. I am going to be traveling wearing jeans and my sneakers. And then I have additional pair of pants, which are lighter. I have PJs, of course, underwear, socks. And then on the top of it, I am bringing my computer because of work. And I am usually printing all the information we are making sure that we have all the phones we can have 
and chargers because we will be pretty dependent on those. We are getting there possibly a portable Wi-Fi if needed. Although we both have phone accounts with Google Fi, we have international service or international roaming without an extra fee or an extra cost. One drawback of backpacking through Japan is the inevitable weight you'll feel after extensive walking. However, traveling with just one backpack suits us perfectly. It eliminates the need to check luggage at the airport and allows more agility on public transport, making the exploration of a new country both more pleasurable and efficient. We will be staying nine nights in six different accommodations from capsule hotel to temple. So if you want to see how it works, <laughs> follow us. It's going to be awesome. So if you're interested in Japan, you better subscribe now because we have like nine videos coming up about Japan. <laughs>